Keep coming. Keep coming. That's it. Have you done this before? I thought you were going. I thought you were going for something important. No, I was going to guide you. No, I'm talking about the camera. Oh. Yeah, I thought about making a video out of this. I think you've done this before because that was. I don't think you could get it any more centered than that. That's pretty good. This is probably the smallest um, thing that's ever been on this trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to show you guys um, how good this Attitude V3 can uh, runs and pulls. I've got about 4,500 pounds behind me right now towing. I'm in overdrive on a slight uphill grade right at the second, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys. I'm cruising at 55 miles an hour at about 1,700 RPMs. And this thing's just grunting along like it ain't nothing. And uh, I try to tell people, man, this, this cam's got a lot of good low-end power. It's got great top-end power. I mean, this truck will scoot. And, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys, I'm going down a, down a slight grade right now. And uh, here in a second, I'm coming to an uphill. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys, I mean, how good this thing pulls. And this is, like I said, about, I'm just, I'm roughly guessing it's about 4,500 pounds that I'm pulling right now. And uh, this is a, you know, medium grade uphill right here. And I mean, it's just grinding along like it ain't nothing. Gonna be another fairly steep hill coming up. I figured I'd tell you guys that too. And like I said, this is a, even a 5.3. If, if this is a 6 liter or a 6.2, it would just be that much better. But you can see, I mean, I'm still in lockup. And this is a fairly steep hill. And this thing's just grunting along like it ain't nothing. For curbside service. <laughs> That's how we do it. It wasn't too bad. That one spot where the where the bank's kind of high on this side, yeah. the tires were trying to climb a little bit. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I knew it wasn't enough to bother you. You could roll right over it. Oh, yeah. Well, I couldn't really watch both mirrors at the same time, so. Anyway, this old girl won't start, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, guys, so we started out with some basics. Um, pretty much the first thing I did is I tried to jump the fuel pump and uh, we didn't have any any noise or anything going on. So I sprayed some uh, starter fluid in the intake and she fired right up and I kept it running for a couple minutes, you know, so we could make sure everything was good. So we definitely have a fuel problem. So we just got the back seat pulled out and uh we're getting the carpet cleaned up because the seat's never been out before but the fuel pump is supposed to be up under here and uh so we're gonna get that cover pulled off and uh see first if we're getting power but i'm i'll be willing to bet that the fuel pump probably took a dump on us what do you think i really think that's the case but uh we'll find out here shortly i'm gonna test the power Make sure it's not something, you know, like uh, the uh, Toyotas have a weird setup. You know, first of all, they don't run the fuel pump when you turn the key on like almost every other car in the world. So when you when the engine starts to turn over, that's when it shoots the fuel. So, um, but either way, that's not happening. But it's got basically like two power levels for the fuel pump. So when it's idling, it uses a couple of different relays. Once it's a circuit open relay and then it also uses a um you know regular fuel pump relay so the circuit opening relay basically gives it like half power like six or seven volts or maybe eight something like that and uh and then when you start driving it switches to like full power with the other relay um so there's always a chance that that circuit open relay you know went out but uh this thing has it's approaching four and a thousand miles so i'm kind of leaning towards the fuel pump finally gave it up so we're going to test it and find out so uh we'll find out shortly 
course, this system's pretty common across Toyota, but um, we just got to see if we can get this cat lifted up right here. It just should pop right up right there. And on this quarter. Let's see, maybe right there. Just a good spot to get on it. All right, let's, you still got the air? Oh yeah. Let's blow this out too. Okay. Usually the two bigger wires are gonna be your fuel pump. Now it looks like this white and this blue one right here. Let's see if I can get this in here. It feels like they're in there. That's the two larger wires. Blue and, let's see, black, white with a black stripe and blue with a, with a either black stripe or a gray stripe. Oh. But uh, we're on it, so let's so see. You're if, just checking continuity. Well, no, you, well I could do that too. Uh, oh, okay. Let's see right here. I looked at it backwards. But you know, it could be interfered with the. I mean, it's reading, but it could be interfering with the wiring on this truck. Yeah. So what we're going to do is try to start it and see if we get any voltage back here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got voltage. Try it again. That was weird. It's yeah. probably left over from what we did earlier. It may be, or maybe when we were jostling this thing around, it, it got it to run for a second. All right, so we're getting power to the fuel pump, so we need to go ahead and, and get this thing out and see if we can stick one of these other ones in here. Okay. Hopefully, it's they're usually pretty universal. Um, I got a couple of fuel pumps. So that's good news. At least we got power and we don't have a stupid power problem because that's worse than a fuel pump. <laughs> that's what I had to deal with with that Toyota Supra. It was, it had a bad fuel pump and the bad fuel pump had fried the other stuff and it took me forever to get that thing to run. So I'm, I'm happy that it's the fuel pump. <laughs> I brought a couple of fuel pumps with me. Um, one of them is a Walboro one. What is this? A 180 something? It'll be a lot bigger than the one that was in there, but it's close to the same. And then this other one, I can't even remember what it is. It's in Pala, Ooh, from up nice. the end of the road. Funny, this one right here. Let's see which one this one is. That is a 450, so we won't be using that one. We don't need that. But this one right here should be the one, like 180 something. Uh, it's used, but it'll work unless you want to try to find a new one. No, that's okay. Um, but anyway, I got like an install kit and some wiring and stuff that I had laying around. So you make sure that's full fixed. It should. Yeah, this is a Walboro pump. I can't remember. I think it might have came out of my truck. It wasn't very old. It looks rough, but it was only in there for like a year. So and it's the same thing. It's a 450, but that's a huge pump. <laughs> At least for this thing. But hopefully, um, like I said, the Toyota fuel pump, like most fuel pumps that are in tank like that, are that size. So we should be able to put it in there. So we'll get it. We'll get this uh, fuel hat pulled out and see what we got going on. Make sure we don't lose these little copper washers. That's the only thing that kind of sucks. I didn't bring any new ones. But these look good. They're not even copper on this one. They look like aluminum, so they'll be all right. The other thing we got to do is figure out how to get this plug off because it wasn't trying to come off a minute ago. See? Mm. This seems to me that would be the place right there. It should be. I think that was it right there. It there just go. sometimes these plugs get kind of when they get old, they don't oh, really push man. the push the bottom out. So 
I told you about breaking the one on the, uh, was it the starter? I think so. Um, so we will, do you have, um, any kind of little Ziploc bag or something we could put over this? Mm -hmm. Just to make sure it don't get nothing in it. Sure. Let's see. Even a little shopping bag or something. It don't have to be nothing fancy. Alright, I'm going to start pulling these bolts out of here. Around the perimeter. Well, you know, hold that thought. I'm going to get this return line off first. Well, I guess I better find some channel locks, too. There you go. I'll, I'll bring you some. Oh, that's perfect. All right, we're going to slip a Ziploc bag over the end of this line just to try to keep it from getting contaminated. Slide it up under the car. And there's some kind of little something right there. I'm gonna stick it up under there to keep it out of the way. There we yeah, go. Yeah, when you want something like that, just ask a geocache. Yeah. Here, I'll go ahead and crack, crack this guy loose. Should be all it needs. <sighs> Don't hurt myself. Don't hurt myself. There we go. I didn't want to smack my anything. <laughs> I didn't want to pull on it too hard. How is fuel coming out the fuel pump side? <laughs> you see that? Mm -hmm. That's the return line and it's just oozing out. I mean, there ain't nothing I can do about it. Yeah, seems like it would be coming down the... Yeah, it seems like it'd be from the hose. Down the hose, not the other way. It's just trickling out. Do you have an uh, electric ratchet like this? Um, no, I've got. This is this is the This is very quickly became my favorite tool. Yeah. And I've got a really nice air one. I got a couple of them, but. Well, you know, you they're so loud. I had I had never used um an electric impact wrench until until you told me that. Man, those things are sweet too. And that and that changed, you know, I just I just never have done it. So Yeah, those things are a game changer. Alright, so I got I think the, Ryobi has got one in the 18 volt, which is what I what does, I use. Does Ryobi even make 12 volt stuff? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever seen any. I mean they I know they do make some stuff, but it's just an odd item here and there. It's not like they make a whole yeah, thing of tools. I got you. All right, so I think we've got to kind of wiggle this thing around. And we got to turn it a certain way, I think. Let's try turning it this way. It's one of those things where you have to hold your mouth a certain way. Yeah. It's like when you're making a cell phone call out in the woods. You got to stand on one foot, you know, stick your thumb in the air or something. Um, this thing's kind of... All right, so we'll get that up right there. The regulator, this is the fuel pressure regulator. We should be able to rotate it out now. And then, all right, there we go. Yeah, you got about a full tank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just about. Uh oh. What? I didn't think about that. I don't think I've got any more fuel socks. We might have to run to Alabama. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. 
All right. What you is, need that to, a, is, you that need a, is that a filter? Yeah, this is the the, the um. They call it a fuel sock, but it's a it's a pre filter. Mm. All right, you're gonna want to take this out kind of quick so it don't drip in the car. All right. And then uh, I think I'm gonna sit this. Well, I'll put this rubber thing back in here and sit this back over the hole so nothing falls in it. All right, guys, slight change of plans. We're going to go ahead and run the o o o o rallies and go ahead and get us a brand new pump and sock and all that because it's pretty cheap. And uh, there just ain't no sense in doing all this work and putting a used pump in there. So we're going to go grab that stuff right quick and get this thing put back together. All right, so we just got back from o rallies and uh, they had a they had the import direct um, fuel pump set up over there. It didn't come with the screen like it was it was listed, but we were able to find this uh what do we call it the fuel sock and uh, uh strainer yeah the strainer it's a s 13025 and uh it actually fits perfect it's just pretty much just like the factory one so this is the factory one right here and uh you can definitely tell it's seen better it's, days it's dirty <laughs> it's seen definitely seen better days just a tad dirty but um uh, but anyway this fuel pump you know slid right in i was able to use the factory rubber piece so we didn't have to trim the other one you always have to trim these whenever you mess with them but the factory one fit just right got that nice strainer on there and uh got the wires done and of course i used the the one one shot solder heat shrink deals on this one too and they work they seem to work really nice so we're ready to put it back together you ready to hear this thing fire up me too. I'm ready. We're going to get this thing put in. Give your word for it. Alright. Well, I just saw something fall in there. There's always little bits of something in the tank. That's what this goes for. Well, the stuff that was on that other one looked like somebody spit their <laughs> skull in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's how it gets after a while. All right, how did I do this? I think I had this under, and then I pushed that in. It was a little bit of a squeeze. That little lip right there. There we go, that's under, there we go. I didn't have this corner over here pushed under. All right, so we got the little oh, nose on back little up. Pigs, yeah. Cool. Helps you line it up. So I'll hand start all these little screws. Oh yeah. And then go around and lock them back down. And it'll be just a few minutes we can test fire it. I'm betting it'll fire up. Still gonna ask her why she tore the other one up. <laughs> it was perfectly good when she left the house. It was still running fine, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's gonna think twice about turning the car off. She said. <laughs> She's already told me. She says I'm never turning the car off again. <laughs> I said, well, especially not when you know you're gonna drive it back home. Yeah. I'm gonna alternate across here. Yeah, get that one to where it's starting to bite, and then I'll move it around. We'll make sure it's seated good all the way around. Alright, now we're seated. Sounded like that in 
Paul it in. <laughs> Probably wondering where we went. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and get this feed line. Got it tucked up under this thing so it will stay out of the way. I don't know what that is. It looks like a evap line or something right there. That way we didn't get any trash in this thing. We got two ceiling rings, so we're gonna put one on the top and one on the bottom of this banjo bolt. And these should be fine to reuse because they're aluminum. The copper one squeezed out a lot more, so they're usually a lot more sensitive with these aluminum ones. As long as nobody, you know, really squished them in, they should be all right. And I think this is actually your socket. Should be about right now look fuel squeezing out of this thing again you see that yeah i guess it's this gravity feeding because right. of it but like, you would think if it was going to push out of this like, hose like a straw in a yeah but in a drink wouldn't you think that if it was going to do that that it would be spilling out of the tank other way yeah i i don't understand that as soon as we got that thing stuck in there it started siphoning gas out of the return That's kind of a tight little spot right there. There we go. All right. All in all, this is not really a bad fuel pump to do. Uh, it can be a little tricky getting the seat folded up or something, but yeah. not too bad. It took us longer to do that, right? Um, the electrical connector is somewhere. Oh yeah, that's up here. All right, so it's plugged in, and I think I need to hook the intake pipe back up. And we'll try it out. I think it should start right now. But I might as well hook this intake pipe back up since we don't need it off anyway. I know it's got a temperature sensor up here, but I don't know if, I wasn't sure if it had a mass airflow sensor or not. I don't think it does, I don't see one. It might take a second if it's got air in the line. I don't know. Since it, since the Toyota don't prime themselves. But hopefully it'll fire up right now. That didn't take long at all. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, that was instant. Like, there was nothing going on. This RAV4 has got at least, what, 380,000 miles? What's it got? Three ninety-three nine oh eight. She's got some miles on her. <laughs> and uh, the other cool thing about this is it's a manual transmission, which you don't hardly ever see, though. It's a 2000... So we got a RAV4 with a manual. And uh, another thing that's pretty neat is a couple years ago, I actually pulled the engine out of this thing and completely rebuilt it. But this before I started videoing, so uh, you can turn it off if you want to. But uh, a couple of years ago, I actually pulled the engine out and rebuilt it. And uh, that was before I you know was making videos but um uh, took this thing out completely redid everything put a new clutch flywheel like we just went through everything 
and uh you know rings bearings i mean like it was a full full rebuild and uh that thing was smoking pretty bad before i did it but uh this thing's been a good car so it's nice to get it running again okay it may be an old beater now but it is hands down the best car i've ever owned yeah. I mean, it's not even close. I would agree with that. Even the, the little bits that I've driven, I mean, it's just a great little car. But, um, uh, it's, you know, got the manual, so it's really cool. But, um, uh, anyway, so we're going to get the seat and everything put back in. And, uh, you know, we might even take the other seat out so we can vacuum under it. It's just so the, <laughs> so we don't throw the balance of the car off. Uh, you know, I want to make sure and keep all the weight even to, Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you on the next one.